First and 10 at the 12. Hurts in the gun. Now Swift goes in motion. Hurts on a quarterback draw. He's at the five. He's in. Touchdown. The Eagles win. Hurts does it again. Oh, my God. Hurts does it again. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He's amazing. Yo, there's a party at Lincoln Financial Field. And the Eagles are 10 and 1. What a win. You're what all a win. You're all invited. There's a party here. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Happy Monday and welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour post Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and Epic Sunday. I'm Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry, Jay Croucher. That sound at the top was obviously the local call of a thrilling end to Eagles Bills. Good to see Bradley Cooper. Very excited. Big fan of Bradley Cooper. Are you? Yeah, I go deep into the Cooper filmography, actually. I've, actually, I've seen Burnt. Did you ever watch Burnt? I did not watch no, Burnt. Burnt. No. It's, it's not great. That is, that's, that's a weird one to start with on the Bradley <laughs> that, Cooper. That is, that is, that is deep. Yeah. I want to have a debate, and I won't do it now because it will yeah. derail the entire show. Because I yeah. also am a Bradley Cooper fan. Okay. Weirdly, I was driving in uh, to the show today. I heard a Cooper interview with Bradley Cooper. He was on, he was on Howard Stern. I'm a big Stern fan. And he's promoting he's got this uh, new movie about Leonard Bernstein. Uh, yeah. Maestro. So he was promoting that. Um, so there you go. No reason for Bradley to come on this show because I've just done the promo for you. I know he was going to come on. But they did talk a little bit about the, you know, his Eagles fandom. Um, but I will just say, as somebody who is a big Bradley Cooper fan, probably not as big as you, but I'm a big no. – but Star is Born is one of my least favorite movies of all time. It's all right. time. Oh, it's – That's a bad call. I could <laughs> – I like you and I need to do a separate podcast where I yeah. do nothing but just yell at you for an hour about Star is Born because it's <laughs> the it's, it's I think it's, it's quite good. It's an awful, awful movie. It's um, at least fine. And I but I will derail. No, it's it's a terrible movie. Right, well, we can and hit what that makes off it even worse is that people love this movie yeah. and they're wrong because it's an awful movie okay. we'll, for a million different reasons. We'll but, hit it off to steal his Bengals. Yeah, yeah we so can uh, we can get yeah. into that bigger comeback. Do you think the Eagles on that drive or me being here today after, you know, uh, 10 minutes on happy hour uh, that uh, ha- I'm on pregame yesterday I, about motorboating. I did, oh, a, I did a whole thing about Sorry. motorboating. Yeah, yeah, we did the motorboating we, my, we, exactly. Yeah. Well, they, there was some confusion <laughs> because I just, I talked about taking my wife out on a boat with a motor. Yes. Yeah. And just anyway, just not a paddle uh, boat, yeah, no, not, a, not a, not a paddle boat, not a sailboat, mm. but a boat with a motor. Yes. Right. Exactly. And just anyway, you know, Michael Smith, who's not pure of heart, you know, <laughs> took it in a different beat oh, that he I thought I meant something else. Yes, way, yes of course. Yeah. There was also Awful. speculation on air on the show about whether Matthew does the Luigi voice while he's on the motorboat <laughs> with his wife. <laughs> wearing the sailor's hat. Yeah, wearing the sailor's yeah, hat. Yeah, Which, anyway. when you stop to think about it, it was actually terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, yeah, but I digress. Have to stop. Allow <laughs> me just to say this very clearly for you, for both of you, and to our listening audience at home. like. The, the amount of terrifying things my wife has, has to put up being married to me and doing wifely duties is a long list. It's a, it's a long, it's all terrifying. Yeah, Jay, imagine. it's all terrifying. Just we're, so you know. We're just She's the bravest woman alive. Beth is an American champion. You have no idea. Yeah. She's a hero. Yes. She's a princess like, and she's an like, angel. You know what she's like, Connor? Jalen Hurts. <laughs> she yes. is. She is exactly like <laughs> Jalen Hurts. A clutch factor, game winning. Yeah. Uh, Nothing some, phases her. No, yeah. Unfazed. Yeah, and we unfazed. got to hear. They struggle in the first half. When, <laughs> yes. it's, when it's winning <laughs> time, when you Beth need a big is play. Time. When you do, she, uh, she brings the victory home. When you need a big play, who yeah. better than Jalen Hurts? And we got to hear from him and Nick Sirianni after a thrilling Eagles finish uh, win over Buffalo. That's not for me to, you know, to discern or um, roll with. I mean, I, I just truly go out there and try to play to the standard and, and be the best that I can be for my team. And, um, there are times today that I feel like I didn't do that, but um, when it mattered most, I feel like uh, we did a good job of, of doing what we need to do. Man, he made a lot of lot of really clutch plays in that second half, and then you know the big one obviously at the end right there. You know that he's he's clutch. He's been clutch for us and clutch for this city and clutch for this team for the past you know three years now. And with that, we'll jump into our Roto World player news. For all your player news, go to NBCSports.com. Nick Sirianni dropping the word clutch about seven times out of nine words. Seven times. And by the way, I assume that's his son who's next to him. There's a, there, for those that are just listening to the audio, and the, so. the clip is there's a little kid <laughs> next to Sirianni. Kind of looks like him. So I yes. assume it's his son. Wearing Eagles gear. Wearing Eagles gear. Yeah. It like, wasn't Penn State Blake. It, it was, right. right. We'll talk about Penn State Blake in <laughs> yeah, a second. Yeah, his time's coming. Uh, but um, uh, but the kid could not have looked more bored. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, why do I have to be here? 
listening that, to these questions. Oh my God, he well, was, gets to watch these wins every week. Right, it's unbelievable. He's, he's bored of winning. Yeah, yes. he's he's bored of it. He's uh he's bored of winning. I will say, like, we could break down the NFL implications of this. I think the Bills honestly lost this game more than the Eagles won. Give credit to the Eagles, like they made plays when they had to, which the Bills did not do. But at the end of the day, Jalen Hurts. Ride or die, third straight year with double-digit rushing touchdowns. This year, obviously, it's been enhanced to quite a bit by the, the, the brotherly shove, the, the tush push, whatever you want to call it. But the fact is, is that, you know, he had, a ga- he, had, he had a rushing touchdown to win the game, to seal it as well. He's now had back-to-back games with multiple rushing touchdowns. And this was nice to see because I think one of the concerns coming into the game was he's not running the way he used to last year. And yet, by hook or by crook, He's getting into the end zone with his legs, in addition to obviously his arms. Fantasy rider dies. We head into Monday Night Football. He's the second best quarterback in fantasy. He could have been my rider died again this year. He was he was tremendous. And look, he still doesn't look a hundred percent. He couldn't beat Linval Joseph on an island. Couldn't get past him. It's Linval Joseph. Why can't he just yeah, run past yeah. him? Uh, but he did look better and clearly did enough. And he was magnificent in the second half and overtime. And look, we'll get into all the fantasy implications. I do think the Eagles are such a fascinating team just from an NFL perspective and a betting perspective. Yeah. This team is ten and one. They made the Super Bowl last year. They're two and a half point underdogs at home next week to the San Francisco 49ers. So that's what the market thinks. The market thinks is the Niners are that much better than the Eagles. But I kind and, of agree. Yeah, I agree too. I think <laughs> it's going to get to right. three. I think right. it's going to get bigger. <laughs> and they're banged up too. But look, I'm fairly, I guess, I don't want to say I'm anti-Eagles. I like the Eagles, but I'm more skeptical that they are a 10-1 and one team. And a lot of that is because they keep winning these close games. But I will say that I think that these three wins over the Cowboys, Chiefs, and Bills, there is obviously some luck involved. If Gabe Davis runs the right way, then they win, they lose the game. But I do think it is a feature and not a bug in a way because two things. One, they have such stability on offense with Hurts, and when they march down the field, their ability to throw the ball, their ability for just Hurts to take off if nothing is open, that is so stable and they can just rely on that. And here's the main thing though. Nick Sirianni is so good, and they just do not make mistakes. They don't do dumb stuff. Right. And the Cowboys, they lost the game because the Cowboys do dumb stuff. The Chiefs lost the game because their receivers can't catch, but they, they don't have good receivers. Well, a- and then the Bills lost the game because Sean McDermott is terrible at the end of games, and he butchered the end of the game. So I think the fact that the Eagles, they just do the right thing. They make the right decisions, and Hurts and the offense are so good at the end of games that they should be winning these close games. But you, you don't expect the Eagles to lose a game because they had 12 men on the field for a field goal attempt, right? Right, which is what the which is what the Bills do. To your right, I mean the the fact is is Josh Allen throws a pick. Gabe, whether Gabe Davis runs the wrong route or Josh Allen threw it in the wrong place, whatever, they're not on the same page. Tyler B- Bass missed a field goal in this one. James Cook is There's running down the sideline. Yeah, yeah it, t- James Cook is running down the sidelines. He has a wide open. All he has to do is catch it. Yeah, and instead, he, he MVSs it. That's yes. my news. He Marquez yeah. Valdez Scantlings. He drops it. If he catches it, he runs in the end zone, and then they take him out for a series, and they sort of punish him. There was a there was a crucial third down on that final drive. I think where they I think it was the final drive where uh, they Devontae ended up taking Smith. the field goal. What? No, not no. the Devontae Smith. I'm saying the 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 uh, the Bills, yep. and they had a crucial third down, and the and the play that they called was a mini, like a little out route to Latavius Murray. Yep. Now, and he catches the ball, <laughs> right. and they convert the third down, but I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Yep. That's your third down play is yep. like Latavius Murray in motion yep. for a five-yard out? Like, anyway, and so I'm with you, um, Jay, is that feature not a bug because last year – the Eagles killed everyone. Yeah. They absolutely destroyed everyone, and then they got into the Super Bowl, and they got into a tight game, and Jalen Hurts has the bad fumble, and at the end of the day, day, the Chiefs end up winning it. This year, they've had to grind it out more, and even though they may not be as good a team as they were last year, they actually might be better prepared for a Super Bowl win. Certainly. And on the flip side, the Bills, who are now 6-6 six and six and have a worse record than the Indianapolis Colts, who are starting Gardner Minshew at quarterback, uh, and were expected to be a 5-12 and 12 team. It's completely insane. And here's, what, here's how I know that Sean McDermott hasn't done a good job this year. This was the biggest game of the Bills season. Everything rode on this. And in the first quarter, they committed seven penalties. This team is never prepared. At the end of the game, why are you using your second timeout before Jake Elliott kicks the field? That goal, was Sean? egregious. You need your timeouts. Yeah. How are you not going for it when you have 20 seconds and a timeout and Josh Allen's arm at the end of the game? Right. Do you know how long it took Dallas in the Philadelphia game three weeks ago to go from their own 14 to Philly's 25? It took them 14 seconds. And the Bills had 20 seconds and a timeout and just decided to kneel. It's unbelievable. The, it's the, malpractice. Uh, the Bills lost a playoff game. Be, with, they had 13 seconds. seconds. 
It's Mahomes, 13 seconds. Just to kick. throw it in the air. It's much more likely to be pass interference than interception. And by the way, if it's interception, who cares? The Eagles don't have timeouts. If it's interception at the other end of the field, yes. they're not going to win. Yes. It's bizarre. Well, and you have one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and you're coaching scared yeah. in that moment. That's, that's Andy, the Andy biggest Reed problem. Andy Reid does the it. same thing with Mahomes. Yeah. It's like, just go for it, guys. Go for it. Very uh, taking it back to fantasy for a second, let's we'll just real quickly. Another great game for Devontae Smith here uh, again in the games in which I, he's now played two games without Dallas Goddard. He's averaging 102 yards. He's got a 32 percent target share in this one as well um, as well. And so he's averaging almost 20 fantasy points per game locked in as a borderline wide receiver one. He's the guy that people drafted him to be um, as long as Dallas Goddard is out. Tough game for A.J. Brown. He gets the touchdown, so you don't really care about it, but just 5 for 37 a touchdown, and I thought this was weird. Um, his average depth of target was 5.2. For some reason, it was just a bunch of dink and dunk stuff, and I don't know if that was how they were playing A.J. Brown, and they were just sort of taking what they're giving, and they were, they were leaving Devontae Smith more on an island, and so that's where Hurts went. But a second straight game where – Brown has underperformed due to his lofty expectations. Yeah, and there's just there's something off about the Eagles' offense at the moment. The first drive of the game for the Eagles, Hertz throws the ball away three times. It's just first and ten, second and ten, third and ten, fourth and ten. They just they don't even get anything going. So that is a little bit strange. But Devontae Smith, he's the big story. He's just he's turned it around from that Jets game, which was a disaster. He's just back to being the guy that everyone thought he would be before the season. Last quick thing here, I think it's interesting. So they're at home, huge game obviously this week. They're at home to San Francisco, as you point. They're opening line is two and a half point underdogs to the Niners as well. Then they're at Dallas. And then they're then they're on the road to, at Seattle, which is not... That's not it, an easy game. Seattle's not defense easy. is solid. Seattle's defense is solid. That's a tough place to play. Right. You're traveling all the way across the country as well. So, um, And then they're home to the Giants. So the next three, I think, will be telling for um, the Eagles. It is still insane that the only quarterback so far this year that can say they beat the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles is your guy, Zach, Zach Wilson. Wilson. <laughs> it's really just remarkable that's, at this uh, point. That's why they play the games. Bill's side of the ball, I don't know that there's much really to talk about here because they're going on a bye this week. But it does – I mean, it was nice to see that James Cook, again, after like a brutal play, eventually got going in the second half. But you saw some Ty Johnson involved. Still too much Latavius Murray for my – it's clearly they trust Latavius Murray more than they do James Cook. Gabe Davis had a nice game here despite the, the bad play at the end. Yeah, but he, I know. There's not, I mean, Diggs got right a little bit. I mean, he's 6-74 to 74 drop, on a touchdown, yeah. had the drop. And also they were taking him out on some third downs. I'm not sure if – he must be carrying something. I don't know why he's not on the field on every third down. And the Bills the, had a lot of third downs as well. The shocking one to me was Dalton Kincaid, 5 for 38 on just six targets. Again, yeah. it's always like start your tight ends against the Eagles. I thought Kincaid was going to have a huge game here. And the game in which Josh Allen, you know, passed for 339 yards. He threw the ball over 50 times in this game. Kincaid only gets six targets is a weird one to me. He, Josh Allen was just a beast. Yeah, just lastly on this game, Connor, I thought Allen was magnificent. He was yes. like 10 out of 10. He, he outplayed Jalen Hurts, and Hurts was fantastic in the second half, uh, and he finishes as QB1 so far in Week 12. With this loss is not on Josh point. Allen. No, and this is the killer, is that I really wish for a lot of reasons that the Bills won this game, but mainly for Josh Allen and to give him that statement win because now he's six and six and everyone thinks that Josh Allen is, you know, he's underperforming. He can't come through in the clutch. Like he's been amazing this year. He is not the problem. And Kevin Cole, uh, who has a great sub stack called Unexpected Points, he looks at what your adjusted scores are based on like the underlying metrics and what the expected score should be based on, you know, more stable stuff like success rate and not, you know, returning a punt 99 yards, which won't happen. And so based on expected scores, the Bills, who are six and six, you know what they, their record should be? What's that? Twelve and zero. They should have won every single game this season, and they've just they've lost six of them. They, they, they put twelve guys on the field during a field goal, right. and you know, guy they runs the wrong route, and they like have the and they have week they, one against the Jets. Just Mac Jones drives down the field against them. Just weird stuff keeps happening, and they're they're not going to make the playoffs. I don't think. No, they're not, and they'll be uh, if if that happens. If that happens and you see some other AFC teams chart surging, suddenly Denver looks like a real playoff contender. Six and the five Colts. Denver. Six, the Colts, yeah. I mean, like, it's, uh, it, it's sort of crazy there, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, right, if the playoffs started today, they, they're not in. They're out. And they got their next game at Arrowhead against Patrick Mahomes. No, the, I mean, listen, their next four games, they have a bye this week, then they're at Kansas City, then they're home to Dallas. Yeah. And then they're at the Chargers. Yeah, Wait, that's, that's not a gimme. Yeah, that's, that's not, not a layup. They're going to win all of them. They've got, probably got to win all of them, yes. which is insane. Um, which, is, uh, which is crazy. But um, 
we uh, we're all listen. We're fans of Josh Allen here. Yeah. We're, fan, we're we're team Josh Allen here. And the bottom line is the offense has been better since they let go of Ken Dorsey. So I mean, there's no concern going forward with Allen. It's just yeah. the defense. Uh, needs but to the make defense a play. hasn't been better. Defense. I mean, that's the thing. That's, like, I, why anyway. are you playing in a soft shell, McDermott? That's, just send a blitz or something. All right, our next game here, a pivotal division matchup. Jacksonville takes care of business in a close one against Houston. Big day for both these quarterbacks, guys. Trevor Lawrence completes 23 of 38 passes for 364 yards. C.J. Stroud also throws for over 300 yards and two touchdowns. As These guys are going to be seeing a lot of each other for a long time in the AFC South over here. No sound here, guys. I know you're both staring. Oh, That's right. I thought you were no. no throwing here. a sound. Like. Yeah. No, just opening up the conversation. I like the fact Stroud. that you – What the I'm hell was that? I am looking at both of you. No, like you didn't ask us a question. You have the rundown. I, I don't I know. listen. I thought some you don't listen to the sounds. rundown. I know that Lawrence no, 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 stop I'm looking at both of you just staring at that way, and I'm like, somebody wants to talk about both Yeah, you're leading to sound. You're right. That sounded like you were leading to I always say we heard after the game. No, you – Yes. They're going to see each other a year. Like, hang on for a second. They see each other. They're going to see each other for a long time. What is he? That's not a question. That's a statement. It's What's a soft the, statement. There's that, no stop question. It. Like, you and I have worked together every day for a effing year and a half. Over a year, yeah. Yeah, for a year and a half, you and wow. I have worked together every single day. That's true. You know I don't look at the rundown. This is true. I look. I trust you to lead That's me in true. the right it's direction. That's really a big reason why I'm yes. here. Yes. But yes, I, I, thought, I thought Jay would bail us out there. Ah, no, that's why yeah. we know it was on you. Yes. Because we both, yeah. we're both on. waiting for well, I, I didn't Trevor know Lawrence to start speaking. Where so, are you, I thought it was yeah, Trevor Lawrence or CJ Stroud was going to talk about how they were. Tough in, moment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was brutal. Coming anyway, that was brutal. Yeah, You're so McDermott. I'm going to call I, you now. I, that's too far. It's, I won't accept that. Wow. I won't accept that. Rogers. I would have had to fire somebody and blame them first for me to be McDermott. Although Ben St. Blake's not here. So you Ken Dorsey. Yes. Yeah, there's yeah. no Ken so Dorsey I'm, in this yeah. situation. Unfortunately, after Connor didn't lead to sound, Connor just fired Bill. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so now we have no, <laughs> yeah. no gym no, shot. No yeah. sound. Yeah. All, right. Um, all right, so Jacksonville side of the ball, like really impressive game. Uh, what's nice is, is that Trevor Lawrence, and there were, there were some rumors, some rumblings out there that Trevor Lawrence might not be 100%, that he might have the leg injury, that that might still be bothering him. Well, he now has three rushing touchdowns in his last two games. Back-to-back -back games with 20 or more fantasy points for the first time this season. I don't know if it's because they're more aggressive in their play calling with Zay Jones out there. It's weird that, like, all of a sudden Zay Jones, who isn't doing much, but, you know, is a nice player, all of a sudden they're, like, the offense is rolling. It's Maybe a weird it's coincidence matchup. at a minimum. But make no mistake that Zay Jones have been back for the last two games. Last two games, Trevor Lawrence has over 20 fantasy points um, for the first time this season. He's the fourth best quarterback in fantasy as we enter into Monday Night Football. And most importantly to me, guys, he looked the part. He looked the part of the franchise guy. He was, he was, you know, they were getting Ridley involved as well. Kirk had a good game as expected. They got the run game going for a little bit. Travis Etienne has a bit of a scare. He leaves this game for a little bit. Dearness Johnson takes over again. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. But again, if I have Travis Etienne, I want to make sure I've got Dearness Johnson, it's not Tank Bigsby that'll take over should anything ever happen to ETN as well. But I thought um, Ridley suddenly looked like the guy he was drafted to be. Yep. And traded for, to be, I mean, in this offense. Just a massive day from Ridley, Jay. And really, uh, the last two games have been huge for Calvin Ridley and what we thought he was going to be coming into the season. Yeah, and it makes sense that he would grow into the season given that he didn't play football for three right. years effectively. So that makes sense. Uh, and he seems to be, now it's him, Christian Kirk. I mean, Zay Jones has the one catch on three targets, uh, but it's really, it's a Ridley-Kirk offense in the passing game at the moment. And I don't understand what's going on with Trevor Lawrence's body, just like the same way I don't really understand what's wrong with Jalen Hurts exactly. Lawrence had zero rushing yards in this game, though it does have the touchdown, which is a nice little statistical quirk, but it was yeah, I mean, that was a that was a tush push. That was like a from the one yard line. Yes, it wasn't like a exactly. scramble in. So but the thing is is just the explosiveness of the passing game, which has been so absent for so long. Eight and a half yards, average depth of target, nine point six yards per attempt. The fact that he's able to put up those numbers against the Houston defense that isn't amazing, but also isn't terrible uh, is very encouraging going forward and now he gets a fantastic matchup against the Bengals who fixed Kenny Pickett yeah <laughs> really did the one thing I'll say is that as happy as we were you know Ridley gets in the end zone five for 89 in the touchdown which is nice 16 percent target share right I mean so 
in three of the past five games, he's been under 17%. Christian Kirk is still the number one wide receiver in this offense, and they're spreading around a little bit more. Luke Farrell gets five targets in this one. Evan Ingram is sort of, you know, um, uh, coming back down to earth as well. Five for 49 on just eight targets there. But um, I do think that you're excited about Lawrence back in as a as a QB1. Uh, Ridley back to fantasy relevancy and, you know, Kirk, again, performing even with Zay Jones back. That was one of the things that you were nervous about at the beginning of the year is because Zay Jones was there. Kirk seemed to be the odd man out, and then it's been all Christian Kirk since. On the Texans side of things, this team continues to throw the ball a ton. Stroud with 36 dropbacks. He, he completes 26 passes. Once again, over 300 yards, two touchdowns. He also added 47 rushing yards in this game, an additional rushing score. Stroud has been a monster as a rookie quarterback, but also a monster in fantasy, Matthew. He's been unbelievable as we enter into, he's a top five fantasy quarterback as we head into Monday Night Football. His fourth straight game with over 300 uh, passing yards. And all of a sudden they're like, this is a guy that wasn't considered a quote unquote mobile quarterback coming out of college. You know, he wasn't considered the way we think about Anthony Richardson, but 47 rushing yards in this one and very quietly has a rushing touchdown in three of his past five. Now, some of them have been just from the one yard line QB sneaks, but still, if you're getting anything from his legs, that's just a bonus because you're getting so much from his arm. When he's at home this season, he is Goff-esque, right? 24.2 fantasy points per game when CJ Stroud is home in Houston. And he is so good. He's getting other coaches fired. Yeah. <laughs> I no, look. I'm not trying to make light of this, but and we'll get into Frank Reich tomorrow um, and the the implications of that change in Carolina. But I truly believe that one of the reasons that Frank Reich was let go in Carolina that came out uh, just a little while ago that the Carolina Panthers are moving on from Reich as the head coach is because of the success that C.J. Stroud is having and that Bryce Young isn't. And whether that's fair to Bryce or C.J. and based on the situations they're in or if it's fair to the coach, but I truly believe that if C.J. Stroud were struggling the way Bryce Young were, was, that I don't think, I think Frank Reich still has a job. Yeah. Is that insane to think? Very possibly. And there's just something about Stroud. Like, I've never seen a rookie play like this. There were times in the game yesterday I was like, this guy's just the best player in football. Like, is he just better than everyone else? And to me, Connor, it's the scrambling, which he did in the playoff game against Georgia, and that really kind of changed that game. And his ability to do that, because he is quick, but he right. didn't really do that as much in college, right? No, he was a pocket passer, and when he was kept he also clean, didn't have to. I mean, he didn't have Ohio to. State had those maulers in good front of him. <laughs> good offensive line, great yeah. offense, tons of yeah. wide receivers. But, I mean, somebody that can run doesn't need to run. But scrambling, I mean, if he unlocks that element consistently to his game with how talented of a thrower he is, it's going to put him, I mean, legitimately in the Joe Burrow tier. Yeah. Like, that's the tier for him if he starts making these extended plays. And he just gets better every week at this you point. Can't, you can't – throw enough accolades on this young man no. he is I mean it's truly brilliant how he's playing and it's the way he's playing you mentioned that like Jacksonville had four sacks in this game and he was under pressure constantly Josh Allen of the Jaguars had a great game yes. in this yeah. one he was constantly after Stroud their entire defense meaning the Jags really got after Stroud and he still he scrambled he made plays he bought time and he his connection I mean, he's making Tank Dell and Nico Collins a thing. Tank Dell got screwed out of, like, 50 yards. because, like, And you see pictures. Like, he had both feet in bounds, and they called it out. But, like, he's turned Tank Dell, 5'8 Tank Dell, my guy, Tank Dell. He's turned him into, like, a 50-50, uh, you know, he, he's turned him into Mike Evans. Contested like, catch he, player. A yeah. contested <laughs> yeah. catch player. I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, he's 5'8, and he's just like, here, Tank Dell, go win a jump ball. Yeah. And, and, by the way, Tank's coming down with it. Like, it's unbelievable. And so – Getting Nico back as well. For the past five games for Nico Collins, 25% target share. Tank Dell has scored in every single game. He's seen at least five targets. Again, I think if you um, if you watch that game back, Tank Dell finishes as a wide receiver 21 heading into Monday night, but should have been a lot better. Some very questionable calls in that game. Not a lot going for the Texans run game between Motor Singletary and yeah. Damian Pierce. Uh, Singletary had a nice game uh, receiving. He had six catches for 54 yards, and he saw – most of the goal line and third down work in this one, Matthew, which you would think makes him a much more valuable play than where Pierce is at right now this season. Every single carry, there was three carries inside the five yard line. Singletary got all three of them. He played 12 out of 13 uh, snaps on third down as well. So yes, 
it felt more like a, and you see it there, it's like an 80-20 split between Singletary and Pierce, not the 50-50 that Bobby Slowick uh, had promised at the beginning of the week. Coaches uh, lie. Yeah, what, stop the presses. Um, but at any rate, uh, they're home to Denver next week, which is a defense that you can run on. So I think better days are ahead for the Texans uh, running attack, especially, by the way, when, you when you're passing as well as the Texans are, you have, that opens up running lanes. And our next game here, Rams-Cardinals. Rams, Cardinals. Rams uh, kind of a blowout, 37-14 win. A positive regression game. Shout out to Denny uh, from Matthew Stafford here. Four touchdowns through the air. Kyron Williams is back. I mean, he's a true RB1 for you right now. 16 carries, 143 yards, a touchdown. He also catches six passes for 61 yards and another touchdown. Kyron Williams finishes the weekend and goes into Monday Night Football as RB1 right now, Jay. Yeah, I think he's healthy. I think he's probably <laughs> healthy. I think he's fine. Uh, he was a monster. I think a big takeaway from this game is just to start everyone against Arizona because that defense had absolutely yeah. nothing against a Rams offense that has uh, been inconsistent at times this season. But Kyron Williams, he's a monster, and you're starting him every single week. And the Cardinals are so bad that even Royce Freeman, uh, as a secondary running back, goes 13 for 77 and a touchdown as well. They got a big in this game as well. And by the way, Kyron Williams... You drink free for today here at the Happy Hour. Congratulations. Welcome back. Great to have you back. Over 200 yards from scrimmage for Kyron Williams as well. He's averaging 19 touches a game. He's a true bell cow running back in the NFL. I think part of the reason, because they were so successful on the ground, Arizona didn't do much on offense. They, the Rams were winning this game and winning it big for throughout. you know. And so as a result, they didn't need to throw that much. So you sit there and you look at Cooper Cup, who as we enter Monday Night Football is wide receiver 75. On the week. He's not right physically. He, he's not. He played 88% of the snaps. He did have 100% route participation, but just five targets. They didn't need to throw that much. And like he was questionable coming into the game. I wonder if he was sort of decoy it. Like they, they were like, hey, we just want you out there, but like we're not going to try to ask you to do much. We also didn't need you to do much because Kyron Williams was running over them so much as well. Uh, Puka Nakua has a decent, you know, has a so so day, right? Four for 27 as well. They're just the running game, their passing game did did literally nothing in this one, but didn't need to. Again, weirdly, Tyler Higby has the big day. Higby, who randomly was announced as out yeah, by the odd. team, yeah. and then they're like, "Oh, never mind, we made a mistake. <laughs> He's actually in." Whoops! Like it was a weird, <laughs> it was a weird one. So I hope fantasy managers caught the correction because the Rams did officially list him as out, and then they then they sent out a correction saying, "No, no, he's actually active," and then he, you know. Higby had just a, a monster day there. Good day at the office there. I'm not yet worried about Cup or Nakua, but again, it's another bad game for two guys that should be top 20 guys every single week, and neither guy is anywhere close to the top 20. Do you, do you think it's just a – my take was it's just Cup was less than 100% and they didn't need to throw. I'd be more concerned about Nakua out of this game just because I think Cup has the injury. Uh, but Nakua, I mean, to be fair, he did have eight targets in the game, which is fine in a blowout. He just didn't come down with them. And also, Nakua, he's not a guy who's going to be catching 50-yard bombs a lot of the time. Like, I think he does need uh, more consistent volume. And I guess the good thing on that front is that, yes, they completely blew out the Cardinals, but their next games, so home to Cleveland, uh, where you expect they will need to throw because of how good Cleveland's rushing defense is, then at Baltimore, home Washington, whose secondary is a complete mess. Uh, so you expect that they will need to throw more often. All right, guys, moving over. By the way, I've been told uh, I played Dan in Mexico in our show league. Yeah, sure, and sure. And apparently Dan in Mexico sat Tyler Higby because of the <laughs> inactive announcement. So. Well done. Wow. That's what I've heard. I don't know what time uh, he replaced him it with. Has been a tough, it has been a tough row <laughs> for Dan in Mexico. Meanwhile, yes. meanwhile, justice for kickers, that's uh, Dev, uh, he, he, every single scrub, this is the, it drives me crazy. Do <laughs> you understand? Like, I put a – heading into Monday Night Football, and I've got um, – uh, I've got Jordan Addison and TJ Hawkinson going tonight. Okay. And yet, I'm still down like – I had a monster – I, like I put up 150 points, and I'm down like 30 to this kid. Because, like, I mean, I have like the second or third highest score in our league this week. And yeah. I'm like, I'm, unless Addison and Hawkinson both have great games, I'm going to lose. Because this – and this drives you crazy. I'm just going to read this out real quickly. Hang on. I'm going to make you guys listen to this. <laughs> um, oh, this drives you crazy when you play a team that you should beat, right? And just – like, he's got two wide receivers. 
Rasheed Rice and Michael Pittman have both had <laughs> huge games. Derrick Henry's first ga good game in a month. He's playing Derrick Henry. Isaiah Pacheco. He gets four touchdowns from his two <laughs> running backs. Like, you know, I mean, Derrick like. Derrick Henry had had a good game. Yeah, since I when. mean, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I put up 155 points. He put up 182. Trevor Lawrence, his best game of the year, right? He has, uh, he has Minshew. Kelsey's first good game in a little while. Like, it's. Uh, Anyway, it's, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's annoying. Meanwhile, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. Well, and, and, and I get tank, I have tanked down on the team. He got screwed out of like 50 yards. Well, my oh, garbage right. team is uh, somehow going to be eight and four <laughs> after I'm going to win another week, putting up like 126. My Steelers led team continues to take on the life of the Pittsburgh Steelers. By the way, down in Mexico, his other uh, tight ends, uh, Sam Laporta and George Kittle. So yeah, I don't so know odd. what they're doing it's, in Mexico. Why is he hoarding? <laughs> why is he hoarding <laughs> tight ends? Yeah, yeah, tight. I, I, I don't feel bad if I win. Yeah. I started Tim Boyle in my super flex yeah, spot. That's so fun. that's where we're at in this, this listen, fraudulent listen, league. Listen, um, like justice for kickers, Dev, Dev, Dev has Zach Wilson still on his team. That's like that's he's what, not checking the roster. No, and he's got Kenneth Gainwell. He put up 188 on me. <laughs> like again, I literally need a Monday Night Miracle from Hawkinson and Addison to beat this guy. Luckily. Luckily, even if I lose, I'm ten and uh, I'll be ten and two. I'm still in first place. We'll Handle get to it. our Monday Night Miracles later, so stick yeah. around for that. Our I'll final wait. game: Steelers, Bengals. The Steelers. This is how they win, sixteen to ten. But this is how they haven't been winning. First game without Matt, Matt Canada. Season high, four hundred and twenty-one yards. You see this tweet from Underdog NFL. The Steelers went fifty-eight games without topping four hundred yards on offense. In their first game after firing Matt Canada, they topped that mark with four hundred and seven yards. And headlining that was Pat Fryermuth, Matthew. Nine catches for 120 yards. Yep, yeah, for the first time they attacked the middle of the field. Fryermuth came back last week, didn't really do anything as well, but gets 11 targets, a 34% target share, twice as many yards in this game. He had twice as many yards in this game. He had 120 as he did on the entire season prior. He had just 60 yards in the season coming into this game. Obviously, he missed some time, but still, Pat Fryermuth, now again, Cincinnati is bad against tight ends. We saw what Dalton Kincaid did to them. Like they've struggled against tight ends all season long, but still, I think this was important for the offense. They did a couple of different things here, which is like they attacked, they, they threw it deep. They let yeah. Pickett throw it deep. They, they said, look, we've got two speedsters in Johnson and Johnston, uh, Deontay Johnson and George Pickens. And like, let's throw, let's, Let's give them some shots at some big plays. Let's use the middle of the field with Fryermuth again, 11 targets. And also, let's get this run game going. That was the thing that was surprising to me is that a week after we'd all anointed Jalen Warren, and he gets 16 touches, which is the second most in a game this season, plays 49% of the snaps. Great, great, great. But it's Najee Harris. It's stupid Najee Harris. <laughs> it's Jay's Najee Harris yeah. who has the better game. He was a monster, my man Najee. Uh, he went 15 for 99, the touchdown, as you mentioned. And also, it seemed like they featured him. Right, yeah. that's what Jalen I thought. Warren, which was true. I, assumed, I think everyone assumed that, oh, we've got a new offensive coordinator. Oh, it's Jalen Warren time. No, 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 no. It's Najee Harris time now. Moving and the he pile. Looked, he looked yeah. fantastic he did look as good. well out there. Uh, meanwhile, Jalen Warren fumbled as well. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe he's just back in the doghouse and we're right back to where we started but the other thing in this game i thought is that kenny pickett looked magnificent and i understand that it was against the bengals offense uh the bengals defense sorry which is not very good but to your point matthew about him throwing deep more often eight and a half yards average depth of target had an absolute dime to deontay johnson down the right sideline which to be fair is usually good for one of those every three weeks but i thought that kenny pickett was very impressive and you might say all right bengals defense not very good gives up a lot of explosive plays that's fine their next four games, uh, one, they get to play the Bengals again uh, in a month, and in between uh, now and then, Arizona, New England, Indianapolis. This I mean, team's going to be 11 and 11 and 4. Yeah, I they, mean, they might be the 25th best team in football. They're going to be 11 and 4. Mike Tomlin has to win Coach of the Year if they get to 11 and 4. I mean, it's it's unbelievable to your point. Like, but yes, wasn't the toughest opponent, but uh, Kenny Pickett did what you should do against a yeah. bad opponent, which is he looked good. I think having the success of the run game helped it out. I'm with you, Najee Harris. You saw the play there. For those that are listening, we just watched the, the video of it. We do have NFL footage on this show, which is not something that a lot of uh, fantasy podcasts slash shows get. So we, we like that. But you so saw on that touchdown watch run. On YouTube sometimes. Yeah, watch on it's, it's like he popped outside, you know what I mean? And uh, Najee Harris, so, like it wasn't just like through the tackles. Yeah. It was a nice run for a touchdown as well. But to your point, like the Steelers, you know, we keep thinking they can't get away with it. They can't no, keep getting away with it, and yet they it. do. So I have to tell you this. So last night, last night, no, I'm uh, so last night, Jason Garrett, hang on, you'll hear me out. Last night, Jason Garrett, our colleague Jason Garrett, called the game for NBC. He was in Los Angeles for Ravens Chargers. And so as a result, I got to sit at the big boy table on the uh -huh. Peacock post game show. 
to talk about this with, with Maria Taylor, with Devin McCourty, and Mike Florio. And so I got to do uh, the, the post-game show. And um, I mentioned that the Steelers can't keep getting away with it. Watch this clip. Well, it's one of those things. It's like it's it's the old it's it's the um, it's the Jesse Pinkman meme with Walter White from uh, Wal uh, Breaking Bad. Like they can't keep getting away with it, right? I mean, you, know? you guys get me every week with a reference I have no clue of. But hit the group chat with that scene so You've that I can know Bad? what you're. I haven't seen that. I don't know okay, what that, that one's not an obscure reference. <laughs> that... Florio, Florio, I know, I know. Like, about, gonna... No, Breaking Bad. No, I'm staying out of the reference business. I've learned the hard way. <laughs> keep my mouth shut and my '70s references to myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let Maria, Breaking Bad is like a top three TV show of all time. I, I feel bad right now because every time she says that, I agree with her because I don't know, don't that know. One either. Yeah, so I'm just standing up for Devin too. We don't know what's going on. No one's seen Breaking Bad. Uh, thank you. On that desk. Uh, how insane went, uh, is that? You went 0 for 3. 0 for 3. <laughs> you know how hard in America that would be to do? Like, it was like I brought up some, like, obscure, like, you know, 70s TV show, you know, some, but, like, it's Breaking Bad. Like a yeah. Methuselah was the, the same <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if, I, if I brought up a Methuselah, then okay, I get yeah, it. Yeah, Mario might like, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse what? Pinkman's a minus 10,000 favorite against Methuselah. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. Oh, man. That's but, like, I was shocked, and, like, and that's what yeah. I was, like, thinking about. So that's what I get for ripping off Jay. Because yeah. that's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I said that on pregame yesterday. Yes. Yeah, that's very good. Yes. Uh, oh, no. You should ask them if they know about um, Homer Simpson next time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, I'm like, like, even, I feel like Breaking Bad is one of those things that, like, even if you've never everyone seen Breaking knows. Bad, everyone's, oh, every, everyone is aware that Breaking Bad is widely considered one of the greatest TV shows of all time, and everyone's, like, seen memes of, like, uh, Walter White, of Brian Cranston as Walter White, of Aaron Paul as Jesse Pinkman, like, like, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things in pop culture. Like, this past year, I just watched Succession. I just binged yeah. Succession. But for years, even when I hadn't seen Succession, I knew what it was. Yeah. Like, I, I you know what I mean? Game it's, of Thrones. Game of Thrones, yeah. Sopranos. Sopranos, you have to watch The, the Wire. Wire. 100%. Mad Men. Mad Men. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it's just, it's like, I, it's on that list. Yeah, that's no, very it's cool. Un I, I was blown away. That three leg Paul I would have been paying about 120 to one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. Like, yeah. And I love them. I love I love Maria. I love Devin. I love Florio. But I'm just like, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. Anyway, there, I'm probably never being asked back to do that. <laughs> yeah, it has. A good run. Yeah, I had a good run. <laughs> it was a really good run. I had run. a good one run. And done. I had a good run. One and done. Before we get to break, let's take a look at some injuries we're tracking coming out of the weekend. Chris Olave has a concussion or is in concussion protocol. Amari Cooper left the game with a rib injury. Baker Mayfield with an ankle. DTR, Dorian Thompson, Robinson also with the concussion. Rashid Shahid with a thigh injury. Demario Douglas in his, what's being listed as a head injury right now. So we will keep an eye on all of these weekend injuries uh, throughout the week during waiver wires and when you're looking yeah. for replacements. With that, we're taking our first break. When we're back, Weekend Warriors, Sunday Scaries, coming right up. Weekend Warriors, as we get into them here, <laughs> Pat Darty, Roto Pat, our friend and colleague, goes on Twitter. It turns out literally every non-Arthur Smith human was right. Who knew? Hashtag rise up. Talking about B. John Robinson, 16 carry, 90 for 91 yards and a touchdown, three catches, and also caught a touchdown. I mean, it's he's right, guys. He's right. It turns out when you give B. John Robinson a top 10 pick in the yeah. draft, a playmaker, not just a running back, adequate touches. He will reward you with points. Yes, it's as simple as that. It's it's literally the most basic coaching tenet of all time. Get the ball in your best player's hands. That's right. It's what I do with you know twelve and under girls basketball. <laughs> it's what finally Arthur Josie. Smith did. Jo oh yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Josie and Sophia, fantastic. Yeah. That's why we run the table. Yes. Yeah, but you know what? But no. Yeah. But you know Arthur Smith finally gets the ball to be John Robinson. He has a monster game. Uh, Nineteen total touches in this one. Back-to-back -back games now with 19 touches. Oh, by the way, Falcons on a two-game win streak. Yeah. I, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, interesting how that works out. Yeah. Not tough. Why give the ball to LeBron and Wade when Mario Chalmers is right there? I mean, right, to run that's, the offense? that's literally what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's like, yeah. It, you know, like, and, and then what happens, Arthur Smith, is that, yes, because, you know, I have to, I have to take out of football terms. I have to obscure basketball references. <laughs> oh, basketball references. LeBron and but, yes, well, right, when you, when you, uh, when you give Jordan. the ball to Bijan this much and then all of a sudden the, the, the defense collapses on Bijan, then you can 
kick it out to John Paxson to drain a three, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Was he in Breaking Bad? <laughs> he yeah. was. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> he was, uh, no, he was in the last They probably have never seen The Last Dance either, yeah, those three. No, no, like, they wouldn't. Yeah, they wouldn't have. It's unbelievable. Uh, Bijan was fantastic. I think the receiving work as well is encouraging, gets the six targets. The NFC South has just got to secede from the NFL. This is a mess. So they're five, the Falcons are five and six. Falcons are going to host the playoff game That's against the crazy Dallas. Part. Dallas yes. are going to go into Atlanta, and Dallas is going to be like seven and a half point favorites on the road in a playoff game. It's a complete mess. But good to see Bijan finally uh, get the work that he deserves. I think I think now that we have again, it's Arthur Smith, so you never know. But I think the concern on on Bijan was never the talent, but just the usage. Is it going to be weird? Is he going to get pulled for Tyler Algier? Are they going to try to do goofy stuff? And they didn't. It seems like they finally found a rhythm on offense here. We're committed to Desmond Ritter. We're committed to Bijan Robinson as well. The concern is, by the way, once again, nothing from Kyle Pitts. Um, but uh, Jets, Bucks, Panthers, Colts are the next four for Atlanta. Only the Jets give you any kind of concern. And look, we just saw Mostert have a huge yeah, game against them. Your team's been able them. to run recently you can, against you them. Can, yeah, so I mean, I think Bijan locked into the RB1 that you drafted him to be. Yep. Only concern is Desmond Ritter, again, was terrible, which is yeah. going to... Yeah, they don't have an answer under center. Nah. Maybe they'll go back to Heineke. Just nah, keep going back and forth. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no way you do that. Uh, over uh, in Giants-Patriots, the game that was being labeled as the Drake May Bowl, Ramondre Stevenson stands out. 21 carries, 98 yards. He also caught five passes for only nine additional yards, so hopefully you were playing in PPR. But Jay, with Ramondre, he just looks to have a little bit more wiggle and explosiveness than what we saw the first month of the season where he was kind of stuck in the mud on a lot of carries. Yeah. I feel like this is our first completely meaningless game of the season oh. for the NFL, Patriots, I, Giants. Yeah. For this uh, season. For this season. Well, just, yes. I was just going to say, because massive very implications for next year. Yeah. Implicate, but as in terms of just a self-contained product, yes. Tommy DeVito against uh, the array of characters on the New England Patriots didn't offer a ton from a fantasy uh, perspective, but Ramondre, he just looks more explosive. Uh, and to get the 21 carries is a huge positive for him. Five, but also catches five balls in the passing game, only for nine yards, but still, most importantly, for proper shot, I took the over on two and a half receptions. Oh, so that you. cash. Yes. So um, uh, there you go on Ramondre. I think he remains in RB2 as well. Other side of the ball, not a lot going on there for Saquon. Jalen Hyatt has a nice day at the office. We'll talk about him a little bit more uh, tomorrow in, uh, in waivers as well. Uh, so, you know, it feels like I, Hyatt is somebody that could have a impact down the stretch. I will say this. Tommy DeVito looked competent. Like, yes. he didn't look awful. You know what I mean? Like he's sacked. He's he actually, was effective. Yeah. The problem is, is he's literally getting sacked once every yes. five dropbacks, which is kind of impossible <laughs> when you think about it. He's, once every five times you get sacked, really? Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, Sam that's Howell a problem. Said, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. So. All right, our next one, Jonathan Taylor, 15 carries for 91 yards and two touchdowns, looking like vintage JT over here, Matthew, for the Colts that are storming towards a playoff <laughs> appearance under Gardner Minshew. Yeah, what was nice is they were playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is a pretty good run defense, and he still he looked like Jonathan Taylor. He's now scored in three straight games. It was his first multi-touchdown game of the year. He's It's a season high in fantasy points, over 21 in this one. He's a top 10 running back as we head into Monday Night Football. If there's a concern uh, with him, Played only 57% of the snaps, which is his lowest since week seven. Didn't get targeted in the passing game either, so that's a concern. But ultimately, I think he's a borderline RB1, uh, RB2 uh, when they face the Titans next week. Th the schedule isn't super easy for them. They're at Tennessee, then at Cincinnati. Okay, you like that. But home to Pittsburgh, a surging Steelers team, and then at Atlanta, which for all the Desmond Ritter jokes, the, fact, the Falcons can play defense. Yeah, they can. And look, it's an interesting balance because they're playing solid defenses for the most yep. part, but they're also not great teams, so you wouldn't expect game script to get out of control. This team could go 11-6, and 10-7 and seven and make the playoffs pretty conceivably, so I think that Taylor will be in game scripts that help him. This year, Derrick Henry, the usage and the yardage hasn't been there, Jay, but the two touchdowns yesterday on top of 76 yards is a big step in the right direction. Yeah, and Henry gets in the end zone twice, uh, as you noted, and that's the key thing. But I do think it's a little bit disappointing that the big Derrick Henry game against the worst run defense in football in a game they're leading the entire way is 76 yards on the right. ground. Like, it's just not there at the moment. The offensive line uh, just isn't giving right. him he, any like, space. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what was his running rushing line prop? Like 69 it was, and a half. Right, right. He goes so he, he, seven, six and a half yards yeah, over. Yeah, I mean, not much. Right, again, fantasy-wise, he, he cashes for you because of the two touchdowns as well, but it's his third straight, game under, uh, third straight game under 80 total yards. Third straight game with lower than 20 touches in this one, and just, it just, you know, after such promise from Will Levis at the beginning of the year, this offense just hasn't seemed to really connect, and um, 
and we'll talk more about it coming in the uh, coming in the uh, in the upcoming uh, days uh, this week as well. But I mean, I feel like Henry is weirdly has become a, like a touchdown dependent RB two, a high end RB two, yep. but still a touchdown dependent. Uh, in a game in which he scored two touchdowns, he's still only wa- running back ten, yeah. heading into Monday Night Football. No like, deal. Like that, that's good, but that's. You should, if you score two touchdowns, you should be better than the Texans. Easiest matchup back of the pain. season for him as well. Yes, correct. Right. Yeah, Colts, Dolphins, Texans, Seahawks on deck. Moving over to the pass catchers, Mike Evans comes into Monday Night Football as wide receiver too, Matthew, because he caught two touchdowns. Six catches and 70 yards, but those two touchdowns, uh, obviously the key to getting him in the top five this weekend. I could not have been more wrong on Mike Evans in the preseason. And by the way, not just me, but the entire fantasy community. I think everyone was fading Mike Evans. They were concerned about the age. They were concerned about the lack of production the last two years. They were concerned about Baker Mayfield, but he has turned it on. Third straight game with a touchdown. Third straight game with nine or two more targets. On a points per game basis, he's the eighth best wide receiver in fantasy this season. And then you look at their upcoming schedule. Panthers, Falcons, Packers, Jags, all teams you can throw on. Our next one, Jay, Rasheed Rice. I mean, obviously 107 yards and a touchdown is great, but I think the story here is season-high 10 targets. The volume has now arrived for the Chiefs' second-round pick from last year's draft. Yeah, and I think the key is there is that Patrick Mahomes targeted his wide receivers overall 17 times, and 10 of them went to Rasheed Rice. And yeah. so, look, it's a one-game sample. Maybe it was something about the specific matchup, but coming out of that game where MVS and Justin Watson effectively cost them the game, it would make sense that Mahomes would go more to Rasheed Rice. He just looks so much better than all their other receivers. And I understand he's maybe not the most polished route runner, but you just get him the ball in space, and he can do what he did on that 39-yard touchdown. No B. Cole Hardman or Kadarius Tony in this game, so you know more of a narrow route tree for uh, and pass catching options for Patrick Mahomes as well. 64% of Rasheed Rice's yards came after the catch, which yeah. I think is important because I was just like, oh yes, that's what an Andy Reid offense is supposed to look like: get guys in space, take advantage of the speed, get mismatches, and so Rice gives them their best option. Justin Watson catches a touchdown in this one, which was nice, but. From a pure talent standpoint, we all want it to be Rasheed Rice, and it seems like Mahomes was like, "All right, I'm done, I'm done around here with uh, you know the MVSs of the world. Yeah. Let me go to the guy that's got some actual talent here. Sorry, MVS, but <laughs> brutal, uh, dude. There's a montage of him dropping passes. Hey, there's a montage." He, MBS cost me a lot of money. <laughs> like, Gary, don't need to tell me. I close my eyes and I still see the ball go through. No, his I, I had, I had, I had Chiefs minus two and a half as the final leg on a number of parlays yeah. that would have made me some real money where I could have just said, screw you guys, I'm out of here. Yeah. But no. Yes. Now you have to show up. Now I got to show up. No. Very Thanks, upsetting. MVS. Our final weekend warrior, another rookie wide receiver, Zay Flowers, a little bit of a different mold. Zay catches five of eight targets for 25 yards and a touchdown, 37 yards on that carry that iced the game, Jay. And would say under Todd Munkin, it's just manufactured touches, a ton of screens, and we saw – the jet sweep as well. Yeah, and the manufactured touches actually worked right. in this game where yeah. he does get the jet sweep and he takes it 37 yards to the house. He's just the most dynamic player on that offense uh, in the passing game. They're on a bye this week, so you figure out of the bye, they'll find even more ways to get him involved creatively. Moving over to Sunday Scaries here, and we start with friend of the show, unfortunately, Austin Eckler. 10 carries for 32 yards. He also uh, chipped in 32 yards on five catches, but right now, Matthew, it just doesn't feel like Austin Eckler is fully healthy since having that ankle injury earlier. Looks a little slower as well. He's had 70 or fewer total yards in three of the past four games, back-to-back games with single-digit fantasy points. Having said that, it was the Ravens. They're at New England, home to Denver, at Las Vegas, home to Buffalo are the next four. Much easier yeah. run schedules. I'm not panicking just yet because at least the usage has been there. Uh, you know, Still got five touch- 15 touches in this game. Jay, as the Giants let Tommy DeVito throw a little bit and they go into the bye week, a tough one for Saquon Barkley, only 46 yards on 12 carries. We know this offensive line has struggled, and teams are simply going to probably sell out to stop Saquon as long as DeVito's under center. Absolutely. He's just going to have these type of games in this offense. They just don't have the ceiling. Uh, There's just going to be these type of days for Saquon. Next guy on our list is Amari Cooper, who goes 2 of 6 for 16 yards. Just a day from hell from Cleveland overall. Miles Garrett gets hurt too, uh, and he's hurt as well, Cooper, so I have to monitor that, but he could be in trouble if it's I mean, regardless of his quarterback situation, that team is in a bad place at the moment. 
And we talked about it, and we'll get more into it later in the week. Frank Reich let go by the Panthers. Adam Thielen catches one pass for two yards. It's been just a miserable season in Carolina, Matthew. It really has. Under 45 receiving yards in three of the past four for Thielen after such a hot start to the season. Hopefully a new offensive coordinator, new play caller in Carolina can unlock Thielen, who's one of the few weapons they have as well. Amari Cooper left with a rib injury in the fourth quarter. We talked about that. We'll see how that goes. But DTR as well was out. It just... Bad day at the office for the entire Browns offense. Better days are ahead for them. Hey, I have to believe. At least the next Panthers coach gets the number one overall pick in the draft. There you go. Oh. oh. No. no, he doesn't. Ooh. The Bears oh. do. Oh. Oh, <laughs> sad. We'll be back. Monday Night Football bets hey. after this. Keep, keep pounding. <laughs> Don't forget on DraftKings Sportsbook this season, new customers can bet $5 and pocket $150 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. Download the app and use the promo code BERRY when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. It's time for last call. Let's take a look at the most bet Monday Night Football props courtesy of our friends at DraftKings. DJ Moore receptions over four and a half, stands at number one. Justin Fields rushing yards over 52 and a half, follows that. Cole Komet's receiving yards set at 36 and a half. The public likes the over, and they also like the over on his receptions at three and a half. Finally, DJ Moore alternate receiving yards 40 plus at minus 425. I, I don't know who's doing this <laughs> and how it's the most bet player prop by the public, but uh, good for them. Jay, I'm assuming you're going somewhere else. I am going somewhere else. I'm taking Justin Fields is over on his passing yards, which is only 195 and a half. That just seems very low for me against the Vikings pass defense that has been okay on the season, but they don't have any pass rush whatsoever outside of Daniil Hunter. They need to manufacture all these blitzes. They blitz more than any team in the league. I think Fields with his scrambling in the dome will have big play opportunities down the field uh, after he evades the blitz. Uh, he was at 169 against the Lions, and then the two games before that, when he finished fully healthy, he was 282 and 335. Matthew, what are you looking at tonight? I'm taking the under on Alexander Madison. Literally an hour ago, it was 45 and a half. It's now down to 43 and a half, but I'm still taking the under here. Chicago allows a league low yards per carry to running backs this season. Since week five, they've allowed the fewest rushing yards per game to running backs. Week six at Chicago, he had just 44 yards. This is Alexander Madison. And Ty Chandler suddenly work, cut into his workload. Uh, I think Madison had only five more touches against Denver last week than Ty Chandler. So tough matchup. He's in a timeshare. Give me the under on 43 and a half rushing yards for Alexander Madison. I like the direction you're going, and I'm rolling with Ty Chandler's receiving yards. It was 10 and a half. It's moved to 11 and a half. Still like the over on that. I think he gets more involved in this Minnesota backfield. And quite simply, Jay, he's looked better than yes. Madison, which is a low bar. But Chandler even looked good over summer. I think yeah. they're finally going to start using him. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday. We know exactly what's going to happen. Madison's first five carries are going to go for nine yards on the ground, and then they're going to bring Ty Chandler in, and he'll do something. So uh, I agree. Also, the Bears, their rush defense is awesome, so you figure that they need to get more involved in the passing game with their rush Madison backs. had a bad fumble last week as well. I wonder if that's in the coach's mind, that, hey, maybe they give Chandler a little bit more run tonight as well. Listen, it's closing time, which means you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So you know what you should do? Why don't you just, you know, um, you know, watch an episode of Breaking Bad, something like that, you know, uh, and uh, and Little go bet on DraftKings. Yeah, promo code it. Barry yeah, for uh, for Jay and Connor on Matthew. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.